Greetings, blessings in the name of the Most High. Well, here we are once again, and uh, it's unprecedented, the kinds of things that are going on, and I, I know that it's very hard for people to cope because there's so much change in the atmosphere that it makes it impossible, so much uncertainty created by um, the current political power in Washington, which has kind of set the tone for the whole world, and uh, many others are taking advantage. For example, it makes me real to think that the net result of the madman in Norway was really that he was a psyop designed to vilify any kind of opposition to the Islamif- the Islamization of Europe in total, which for the Islamics means ultimately the overthrow of the British, overthrow of the language, overthrow of the continent, and to implement Sharia law, uh, and then, of course, apply that same thing to the United States. In other words, it's to, to bring a caliphate to the world. And uh, so desperate are the left who promotes this guy. Um, and the Islam is a left-wing you know, faction of the Communist Party, basically, which is what the guy said when he went crazy, which means if you say the same thing he said, you're the next madman. Okay, so it's an attempt to shut up not only the Norwegians from complaining, but all of Europe from complaining about the Islamicization of Europe, or you're an Islamophobe if you don't like Islamofascism. Okay, just that one thing is awful that these people think we're so stupid that we can't see right off the bat it was a PSYOP, right off the bat it was a military operation funded completely and entirely by the globalist elite. Why can't people see how simple that is to understand? That George Bush was a socialist, okay? George Bush was a communist. His uh, Patriot Act and the TSA and all the tyranny that he brought is right out of Marx. What else do you need to know? A Clinton, Bush, the CIA, and Obama, their, their failure in office now, basically are all part of a team to bring global tyranny and, and to destroy people's lives and to destroy freedom and to destroy free speech and to destroy everything they touch. What they don't understand is they themselves are death. They themselves are hell. They don't matter. They're not human beings. They're not redeemable because they already have crossed the second death. Now, that's a prophecy I just said. They've already gone by the second death and are proud of it. Anyone in Skull and Bones, anyone in the Cosa Nostra, Mafia, all that, they all have to cross that threshold of the second death in order to be a made man. Understand? And Bush was a made man. Clinton was a made man. And Obama wants to be a made man. And um, the jury's still out on that. But to be a made man, you have to do something awful. But further to that, it's very interesting how in my book, Lamb, I had, uh, you know, a guy who wanted to move up. Not too dissimilar from Obama. I pictured him as being a a man of color, you know, a, a, a black guy who wanted to move up in the system and had to, uh, in front of the, the, the elites, uh, you know, in a ceremony, sacrifice his, children and wife and kill them and gut them like uh like gutting a uh, a deer or something gut them in front of them and then they immediately broke into an orgy and the ceremony was held in a prestigious church now why would i write that so many years ago uh yes it worked he moved up he moved up you see he did something so awful did Does that mean in his heart he crossed the second death before he ever even got to that point of having the opportunity to slay his family in front of his elite friends who want to have an orgy over the blood? Before that even happened, he had crossed the threshold of the second death. He was already dead, in other words. Before that even got to that point, he was dead. So... The elites who think they run things and don't because they are slaves to the uh, spirits that animate them, which uh, makes them sort of a a zombie. Uh, You won't be seeing them again. You know, this go round will be your first and last time that they they actually get to see 
someone who is free and who walks free and who is free and whose heart does not belong to this world, whose soul does not belong to this world. Somebody who actually exists in another plane of reality, who visits here to remind people what's at stake. Don't cross the threshold of the second death because you're not coming back. Once you go to a certain point, it's as if you don't exist to begin with. Thus, most of the leaders and politicians, I say to you, they do not technically exist. They may make policies that affect you and they may do things that affect you at the gas pump or your jobs or whatever, but technically they don't really exist. They're not to be taken seriously. When their mouth moves, you don't need to listen. It doesn't matter. I need to remind myself of this every day. When you're dealing with an Obama, I have absolutely uh, no problem seeing him sacrificing his family or anybody, for that matter, um, to advance his own career. Absolutely. I see him as the exact same kind of guy. And uh, you have to also understand he is technically, you know, chosen by them because of the bloodline. He comes from, you know, British royalty and Kenyan kings. <clears throat> you can trace it back. So he's got this sort of bloodline entry point. But then, of course, it's up to your behavior, right? And um, he sh has shown a willingness to do whatever it will take, uh, no matter how many people have to die, to boost himself. And that's the kind of guy he is. This guy you won't be seeing again after this life. You know, you, you feel sorry for him because he is perishing. He's already dead. He's already gone. There is no redemption. I can just prophesy this. There is no redemption for Obama. He crossed the second death threshold, period. And everyone around him, the same thing. You're dealing with vast numbers of people in leadership who you'll never see again. People at the UN, at the IMF, at the various, you know, they, they appoint themselves. That's how you know they are the second death people. They are the people of the opolis. They're the people of the second death. They're the people who are death personified. They are meaning they have lost. They have lost. This is all they have left is this little glimmer and, you know, siphoning off energy off each other, you know, uh, using the buddy system of depravity to suck each other's souls to keep going. But they're dead. They, there's, they have no light in themselves. They are pure darkness. They only exist to suck the light out of those who are still free, but that can't work if you have Jesus Christ that blocks that. Holy angels block that. They can't get in to take that. Now, those of you who are victims of gang stalking, you have to understand it's just an extension of the same. It's, there's no difference here. This is them, and when they do it, what do they get out of it? They are you know, sucking the life out of you and boosting themselves. It's all part of a satanic... Gang stalking is just a satanic ritual veiled in um, kind of empty ritual. In other words, a uh, ritual like following you, surveilling you, and all that is all part of a grand satanic um, uh, service, you know, just like a church service. And so long as you um, aren't bothered by it, you know, and you understand that it goes on uh, constantly and that they are part of the hive mind and group think and they can't do anything on their own, and this is the kind of thing they do for energy to energize themselves. Uh, you don't have to really pay attention to it. You can then avoid it. Now, I know that sometimes I've run smack dab into it where it looked like it was dangerous, where it looked like, you know, um, the, the forces of darkness were amassing and there's nothing I could do. I had to get out of there. And then, you know, yeah, they throw stuff on you that works on you internally on your mind, trying to make you uh, messed up mentally. And I understand that that happens and then you've got to get away. I get that. But see, what I'm saying is when you reflect upon it, don't let it bother you because that's just the way they do things. Make people un uncomfortable, make them upset, make them suicidal, degrade them, hurt them, take their energy, take their souls, take their talents and boost themselves while they create their empires of shit. And that's basically all they do. They do the same thing in Washington, D.C., in Rome, in um, you know, in uh, Beijing, in uh, Pyongyang, in in uh, you know, Caracas, it doesn't matter where you go, they're doing the same, building the same shit pile, uh, and calling it you know our lovely culture, our civilization, uh, our civilization, and in uh, indeed um, anything that is built on the will of the devil is absolutely garbage and will collapse because the devil's motivation is for man to destroy himself. 
that's the devil's motivation anyway. So no matter what you build under the auspices of the devil, it will not be, uh, you know, the devil's not really interested in worship of man. That's what people think. Not at all. He's not interested in you building temples uh, to, to enshrine him, though there are temples all over the world that enshrine the devil. That's not what he's after. He's after ultimately the destruction of the human genome and also anything created in this 3D dimension he'd like to destroy and or pervert. And that's the real game. That's the game that Mick ja that eluded Mick Jagger in the song Sympathy for the Devil. Uh, basically, when the lyric goes, what's puzzling you is the nature of my game. It's like, no, that's not puzzling us, Sir Mick. It's very simple. The nature of your game is the destruction of humanity. And you've said so. It states so in, in God's word. So there is no mystery there, Mick. You're absolute well, I should probably edit that out. That's about the 11 hour mark. I will edit that out. I had a, an F word, F bomb expletive. And, uh, well, you know, maybe it's time that, uh, you know, we stop this idea of creating an image, you know, of the, the pure person, you know, creating an image. Um, you have to understand it's war. And every day that uh, we speak on the net or we do anything, we are at, uh, we are on the battlefield, you know, and it is absolute war all the time. Absolute war all the time. And um, this is uh, the main thing you have to understand. They're at war. They're very, very uh, diligent about it. They're very, uh, uh, you know, how, how shall I put it? They're very... Um, War is kind of their thing. You know, they they want to destroy everyone and take away the freedom from everyone and take away the integrity of everyone and take away uh, and create force everyone to take a uh, second death Luciferic initiation so that they can't go on with the Lord and to destroy everything God made, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera on down the line. Okay, so every day you say something that's going to be the light, and this is definitely the light, the light is always Jesus. He is the light of the world that takes away the sin of the world. He is the, he's, um, you know, the way, the truth, and the life. He is the Lamb. He is the only way given by God, our Creator, that we can escape this horrible fate of he hell and death, death and hell, which is what this is, ultimately. The people that are the elites in this planet, they have embraced hell. They're already in hell. They're already dead. That's why I see Obama, all I see is a ghost that's on TV. I don't see a real person. You know, so why do I take it seriously? Why do I let it bother me? What's going on with a lot of you people right now is that you're very bothered. You can't shake it. It's inside you, it's outside you, and you just can't get free. And the reason why is because they've ramped it up. And all their sorcerers are you know, working full time to invade your mind and to, you know, make sure that you are as miserable as possible. And, uh, you know, it's also being done by satellite and chemtrails, and every, anything they can possibly do, weather manipulation, economic manipulation, anything they can do to attack you is basically where they're getting to. And in fact, in times of old, this just became mass, <clears throat> mass murder, it became mass genocide. You know, it ultimately just became... Like I said, um, you know, just like I say, a mass genocide, mass murder. Uh, you know, it, it manifested in physical terms throughout history, you know, whether it was the mass slaughter of this people or that people, blaming those people. These people that are the elites, they never will blame themselves. They will always blame some group that they have to vilify. And then if they can get away with it, just kill them all. That, because that's the way a dead person behaves. That's the way someone who is hollow, who is a sociopath, who is who is um, uh, damaged in his personality, who is sick. That's how they behave. And to be an elite, you know, to be a leader, you have to be sick. You have to. There has to be something fundamentally wrong with you psychologically. You have to be a criminal in order to be an elite or a leader of any any place. It's the rare exception. That's why Republicans have so many problems because there's a lot of you know, decent people that are not sociopaths and that are conservatives who love God and they may be mind controlled to think that, you know, church is the bomb and all these other kind of things. That's fine. But I mean, basically, they're not the sociopathic genocidal killers that the uh, the uber left is 
with their globalist policies and the global elite, which is basically the uber left. I used to think, as I said yesterday, it was like a left of a Hegelian, para, uh, paradigm, Hegelian dialectic. 